Hi, I'm Brent. This is part five of our billet block Subaru engine upgrade. And in parts one, two, three, and four, you can search them on our YouTube channel. Um, and we've spoken about heads, internal components, extractors, oil pumps, water pumps, and things like that. And in part five, we're going to talk about turbos. Now, this this uh, turbo video was probably very relevant to a whole range of Subaru turbos because we're going to talk about the history of Subaru turbos and ultimately the turbo that we're going to fit to this engine. So let's go back in history from a little bit of time to understand where Subaru have come from in the design of their turbos. So back in 1994 when we had the very first WRX um, developed in Japan, the basis of the legacy which then became the Subaru um, RS Libby in Australia, we have the TD04 which is um, very very common turbo. You can see this is the compressor housing on this side and then the exhaust housing on this side, the wastegate, um, which is integral in the exhaust housing, actuated by the arm, which is then controlled by the um, wastegate boost control solenoid and the factory ECU. Now, um, the uh, inlet comes under the inlet manifold, and on those particular very early models actually come outside the inlet manifold, but the later models, air intake into a turbo, then through here, underneath the intercooler, and into, which was obviously a lot smaller in those days, top mounted intercooler and into the front of the engine. Now, the TD04 was a Bush turbo. This turbo was effectively almost the same turbo from 1994 right up to 2008 when you're talking about WRXs, which was then replaced with a, a VF52 turbo, whereby Subaru changed the position of the inlet manifold design and the way the intercooler fitted and it was very similar to a housing similar to this. So effectively it was a TD04 with a, a rotated um, front housing and a flange on it with a connection that then bolted on and connected to the intercooler. So that was the replacement to the TD04 which MY09 got the much better turbo which was then right up to the final model MY13, MY14 Subaru WRX. So that's what the made the big difference between the original lower performing Subaru MY08 to the MY09 was substantial change in the design of the turbo because if you remember 08 Subaru developed the um, model which was a very very um, overall car to try and grab a much market share but wasn't really as hardcore and as good as the previous models. MY09 went massively overboard, a lot more performance in that model and the main improvement was the change in the turbo. So. Then let's talk about the STI range of turbos. Now, if you really wanted to, this turbo would also fit on the early model STIs, 1994, right up to the VA series MY17, but you wouldn't put a small turbo on an STI, but typically you've got the VF34, which was the most common replacement or STI turbo of its time. There was VF30s, VF28s, which was a smaller turbo, VF29s um, back in the GC8s, um, um, and then VF32s and all sorts of upgrades from STI models in Japan. But the um, change of this turbo was then very, very similar. Inlet compressor housing, same. The connection to the turbo is the same. Integral wastegate and all that kind of stuff. Now, before we talk about the bigger turbo that we're fitting on this engine, let's just quickly talk about the twin scroll turbo. Now, in Australia, the only twin scroll engine up until the MY15 WRX before it was released is the... VF38. Now this particular turbo is a twin scroll meaning it's got two inlets off the exhaust manifold that go into the, the exhaust housing to bring the turbo on boost earlier. One inlet goes to the outside of the blades of the turbo, one goes to the inside of the blades of the turbo to create torque, the outside one brings the car on boost a lot earlier. That's why twin scroll turbos have got really good bottom end spool and they come on, to, on boost very early. However, not a good upgrade turbo if you want to improve the performance and boost because it's a relatively small turbo and these are really well known for failure over a period of time if you modify your car incorrectly um, and also if you push too much boost through that particular turbo. There are other bigger twin scroll turbos that you can now purchase and some people go for twin scroll upgrades on WRXs and SDIs if you're looking for performance improvements. That's a whole different kettle of fish but if you're looking for a twin scroll factory turbo MY03, 04 or 05, around about then, was the Liberty that was sold in Australia. Now this also was a similar turbo with different sizing, which come out in the Impreza STI as well. Uh, Spec C's in Japan, the 2 litre engines right up to current model, still had, um, in the VA series engine, 
uh, twin scroll turbos as opposed to the VF series uh, single scroll turbo engines. All fit in a similar way. So let's then talk about what we're doing on the upgrade with the bill of block assembly. And this is something that we're going to make some pretty dramatic changes on the design of this engine because typically when you're building an engine of this type of power and performance, the normal um, uh, path is a rotated turbo where you can fit a much bigger turbo um, inlet around the outside of the exhaust, uh, inlet manifold, front mount an intercooler, remote modified air intake and things like that. But this engine is going into a road car and the customer has specified that he wants it to look as original as possible. Pretty obvious with a uh, gold anodized block. However, a lot of this will be covered when the engine goes back into place. And he specified to use a lot of the original parts from our original upgrade um, with the improvements of the built block. And in this case, we're going for effectively, mechanically, the biggest turbo that we can fit in the original factory position. And there is a small little mark here. I'll just show you my engine builders just make a very small mark on the block here, which is where the gearbox bolt on. We've just got to grind a little bit of the uh, billet assembly out of there to fit the compressor housing of this bigger turbo. So take one step backwards. This is an upgrade from an original engine that we built from a previous cut from another from the customer. And this is the assembly that we fitted. You'll notice it's very, very similar in its design to the location of the original factory turbo. It's got single scroll update, which if you look at our extractor video, you see that bolts onto the extractors. Um, it's got integral wastegate in the back here, which controls the boost. That's the um, outlet of the turbo assembly on the exhaust side, which then goes into the downpipe of the exhaust. And of course, um, the compressor housing then comes across and connects to the intercooler. And I've got a separate video we're going to talk about intercoolers in a minute, but effectively that sits on the engine like that. Now, one thing on the Subaru engines, when they went to electronic throttle, they increased the offset of the compressor housing. And if, you'll, if you have a look carefully here, you'll notice the outlet here is not in line with the snail or the compressor housing on the turbo. Whereas you look at this one, it's in line. That's because the previous model car that this was fitted to in the Subaru EJ series range didn't have electronic throttle. And the reason why this is now offset is to provide more room for the compressor um, outlet and the hose to fit around the back of the electronic throttle control because there's not a lot of room in here. And I'll show you that when we get the engine in place on the car. So this particular assembly, as you'll notice, which was on the original build spec, it's got a stepped inlet to the turbo here because we're running a three inch silicon intake, which is mechanically the biggest you can fit under the inlet manifold, and of course, modified exhaust, but we won't show about that. Let's just look at the difference. So knowing that we've got more grunt to push through this engine, we've gone for a slightly bigger um, turbo assembly, and you'll notice this doesn't have a step in it because we're running a much bigger um, compressor side, but also have a look at the exhaust side. You'll see this is machined right up inside because this housing is um, almost at its mechanical limits of what you can fit with a bolt-on downpipe to fit in the original factory position, which is what's specified for by the client. Now, I know there's going to be people out there saying, oh, why didn't you run a rotated up intake? You run a bigger turbo. Well, it's not all about top-end power. This customer is not saying some holy grail of, you know, a thousand kilowatts or something like that. He wants a good, drivable road car with really good grunt, really good bottom-end performance. He's not going to be driving the car around everywhere in the town with his foot buried to the floor all the time with the car on maximum boost. He wants the car to have good progressive increase in um, torque, which is directly related to the ability of the turbo to come on boost as early as possible. And that is one of the main reasons why we've gone for original factory located turbo with a top mounted intercooler. Now again, that's gonna surprise a hell of a lot of people. And yes, we are probably compromising a little bit of the top end power of the car. But again, it's not all about the top end power. It's about bottom end torque, drivability, fantastic car to drive on the road because this particular engine build from what we can tell is probably going to be the first in the world with a factory located turbo, a factory located top man in intercooler in a genuine road car. The guys at SNJ Automotive with Dan Day's car, massive um, improvement in their particular SNJ 1000. They've got rotated turbo assembly with front man intercooler, fantastic car, awesome drivability and really good but that's a rally sprint track car that has got 
designed for wide open throttle where Dan's going to be on it all the time. It's not a road car, although it could be driven on the road, but this particular one I'm harping on it in a big way because I don't want everybody out there saying, oh, it was a waste of money and was a waste of performance. If you get your turbo sizing correctly, if you choose your turbo right, it's not massive, it's not laggy, it's going to have really good performance, and this is why we've opted for this. So we've gone for a slight increase in turbo size compared to the original build. Um, I'll put a link on this video to the original engine build where we ran this turbo, but this um, turbo package is what we do with our engine upgrades when we're pushing over 300 kilowatts at the wheels, um, and has got really good spool, but of course really good mid-range and top-end grunt. And you remember, when we're not going for some massive increase in boost. So there you have it. Bit of history about turbos. No matter what Subaru you've got, I'm sure this information has helped you somewhere. Um, let's uh, talk about in the next video, we're going to talk about intercoolers. Um, but of course, you can do a search on our website, punch in um, TDO4 or VF30, and you'll find a whole heap of drop-down information on the menu, whether it's technical information you can read about turbo design off our website, or you can choose one of the um, uh, search delivery to information and go to a part on the website and look at information there as well. And of course, you can follow us on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter and Instagram. We'll put some more still photos as a link to the bottom of this video. And um, stay tuned for the next upgrade, uh, next part of this video series. And uh, we'll talk about intercools and then we'll finish off getting the engine back in the car. No matter where you are in the world, I'm Brett Middleton. I really hope this video has helped you. Um, thanks for watching.